My name is Georgia. Wait, no, it's not. My name is Hannah, and this is my no buy year. This was me when Georgia sent me an Instagram message asking if I wanted to do a collab with her. In honor of Georgia today, I'm wearing my one hoodie, my one beanie, and my one unusual colored lipstick, which is NARS Pussy Control. I feel very cool, but I don't feel very cool in terms of my temperature. I live in California and this is a wool beanie, so I'm gonna take it off <laughs> so that I don't sweat all of my makeup off during this video, but I just wanted you guys to see it. In case you couldn't tell by now, this video is a collab with the one, the only, the lady of the internet, the famous Georgia Harris. I love Georgia's channel. She is so beautiful, she is so funny, and she's so real, she's so down to earth. I remember the first moment that one of her videos came up on my YouTube playlist and I started watching her. Just two seconds in, I was like, oh, I love her. I just feel like I've known Georgia since high school. I, and it's not because there's anyone in particular that I've known since high school who she reminds me of. It's not that direct of a link. It's like my soul knows her soul. But we are very different in terms of the way that we interact with makeup. So I actually think that's one of the things that's going to make this collab particularly fun and particularly interesting. Georgia is also very calming to watch. I know that many of you have said in the comments that you enjoy watching my channel because my dulcet tones help to lull you and if that's true of me then I think that you will really enjoy watching Georgia too if you don't watch her already. I, I can't believe that there are any of you out there watching me who don't watch Georgia. I feel like my subscriber base is probably completely encapsulated in her subscriber base. But if there are one or two of you out there who watch me and you aren't watching Georgia then it is time. It is time for you to begin. I will obviously leave her channel linked down below. She is astute, she's honest, she's intelligent, and she's incredibly creative. She's constantly coming out with new video ideas, things that no one has ever done before. She is just such a joy to watch. And I am so honored that she reached out to connect with me and asked if I would do a collab with her. My channel is very small compared to hers, so it's a kind of community-mindedness and generosity that warms the cockles of my little heart. So thank you so much, Georgia. I'm really glad that we're doing this. So the topic of our videos for the collab is makeup I'm a sucker for. I have a suspicion that the things that I'm a sucker for are really, really different from the things that Georgia is a sucker for. And in fact, one of the things I'm the most curious about is to find out if there's any overlap. So I can't wait to watch her video and find that out. But the other thing that I really enjoy about this concept, the concept of being a sucker for something, is that it's connected to the idea of conscientious consumerism. I think that the more aware that I can be of what I'm a sucker for, the more capable I'll be of stopping myself in the act of buying dupes, buying doubles, buying something just because it rings my bells even though I don't actually want that thing or even though I won't actually make use of that thing. And sitting down to make this list, a list of things that I'm a sucker for, I feel like has armed me against advertising in a way that I wasn't quite armed before. So I'm looking forward to taking this list with me into 2019 after the end of my no buy year. I think that anytime I feel like I'm about to buy something, if I can stop and be like, wait a minute, is this one of those things that I'm a sucker for? If it is, it probably means that I already own something very similar. Being able to do that is probably going to help me keep my collection in its edited state and keep me from overspending after the end of my no buy year. Let's go ahead and get in to the meat of the video. So the first thing on my list is bronze, bronzy eyeshadow, bronze. I am such a sucker for bronze and I've been talking about it for months now on my channel and I don't think it's just a phase, I think it's something that I'm really a sucker for. And I have so many bronzes, I think that we all do, it's like how can you not? I love just putting bronze all over my lid, bronze all up in my crease, bronze blended out to here. 
I would love to just be bathed in bronze and there are so many tones of bronze so it's something that I can sometimes get tricked into thinking I need more of. I did pick out an example kind of like a quintessential bronze that to me when I think of like the bronziest bronziest luscious most delicious thing in my collection that is quintessentially what I'm a sucker for it's this ColourPop Super Shock shadow in Blaze. And the fact that it's a cream shadow, the fact that it's like a creamy single look type bronze makes it even more the kind of thing that I'm a sucker for. I just live for this type of eyeshadow. The second thing on my list is also in the eyeshadow category, duochromes. I am so deeply in it when it comes to duochrome eyeshadows. That's a category that is one of the things I found myself fantasizing about the most frequently during my no buy year. The ones that I have that I feel like serve really, really well and help to remind me that perhaps my appetite for duochromes is pretty well sated by my actual current collection are two from ColourPop and one from Urban Decay. So there's ColourPop Tea Garden, ColourPop Glass Bowl. Tea Garden's got more of a greeny shift and Glass Bowl has got more of like a unicorn bluey shift. Tea Garden is right there and Glass Bowl is right there. And they're gorgeous duochromes and they perform really beautifully on the lid as intense duochromes if you build them up or as kind of like a sheer washy duochrome situation which is one of the things that I've just been dreaming of and dreaming of. It's really interesting to fantasize about a certain kind of product on a no buy year because there's just no chance of buying it. Like I know that those fantasies are going to stay fantasies <laughs> and almost every time I've been dreaming of duochromes I come around to realizing that I have kind of the two dream duochromes that I could ever think of in my life. And then the third one is Urban Decay's Lounge, which is like that classic blue-brown pigment. I probably will end up collecting a couple more. If you know of any really special duochromes that don't fall into those three color categories, let me know. I'm a total sucker for duochromes. All right, the third thing I wrote down on my list is Intense Glitter Anything. I am such a sucker for glitter. The shinier, the sparklier, the chunkier, the better. I want the shiniest, the glowiest, the dreamiest, the most sparkly glitter on my face. I guess primarily on my eyes, although I'm all in for glitter highlighter as well if it's done right. If it's like really buffed into the skin and it's really becoming part of the skin. Every time some haute makeup brand comes out with a new palette, like Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath, and it's those glitter shades that are being swatched all over Instagram and they're being swatched with that fuzzy filter that makes it look like a dreamland of glitter. I start thinking like, I need that, I'm, I need to have that, I'm such a sucker for that, for that imagery, for the concept of super intense glitter. And the thing that's kind of keeping me grounded during my no buy year when it comes to glitter is I have these two eyeshadows. Well, first of all, I have some Stila Magnificent Glitter and Glows, and honestly, you can't even get more glittery than that. Like, that is pure liquid glitter on the eyes. But I also have these two eyeshadows from the indie brand JD Glow. They're similar in shade to the two ones from ColourPop. One is kind of a more unicorny one that's like the super intense version of Glass Bowl. And then the other one's more of like a greeny undertone that's like a super mega version of Tea Garden. So these are really intense and I'm also glad that I still have Glass Bowl and Tea Garden because there are situations in which this would be too much. It's like a mirror of shine on the eyes. And they're also really truly glittery in a way that the ColourPop shadows aren't. I mean, call me a fool because I've never tried them, but I just can't imagine that Pat McGrath's eyeshadows are more shiny than this. They might be as shiny, they might be really, really stunning like this, but how could something be more shiny than this? 
Still, I am a total sucker for this kind of thing. And right now, these are just kind of my two crown jewels in my collection. It soothes me a bit during my no buy year to know that I have these two at my disposal and that I can't imagine that there's any makeup under the sun that is more intensely glittery than those two eyeshadows. So the next thing on my list that I'm a sucker for is orange lipstick. And I'm specifically talking about that incredibly brilliant persimmon statement lip. And when I thought about this idea, the idea of things I'm a sucker for, that immediately sprung to mind. It was so obvious to me that is something that I'm really a sucker for. I have bought that same color or the idea of that color in different formulas from different brands and I've been doing it for years and years. I'm, I'm so here for it if it's like a brilliant red-orange lip. So the color that I picked out that is like the quintessential version of that color is my Tom Ford lipstick in Wild Ginger. And it's ridiculous because this is, the, to me, the perfect lipstick. It's so luxe and it's such a perfect color and the formula is amazing. I couldn't love it more, so why do I have so many other lipsticks that are this color? It's because I'm a total sucker for it. So I knew I wanted to mention that as something I'm a sucker for, but then I realized that it's not just that. I, it doesn't stop at orangey reds. I'm a sucker for reds when it comes to lipsticks. And some of you even noticed when I did my lipsticks declutter that my category of reds was so big. I think actually I had more reds than I did anything else, which I think is fairly unusual for a lipstick collection, especially considering that I don't wear a red lip every day. I'm not like a one of those people who has a signature red lip. I would say that I get it together to wear a red lip maybe once a week. So that's not that frequently. I'm wearing other things more often, but in terms of what I've bought over and over again, what I'm a total sucker for, I'm a sucker for a red lipstick. And it's interesting to think about it in these terms because if I'm such a sucker for it, then I should wear it more often. And in fact, I'm thinking about doing like a week of red lipstick. Maybe I'll do a week of red lipstick and film that in, in a check-ins series. I think that would be really cool. Good idea, Han. Thanks. All right, the next thing that I put on the list is nude cheek products. What I'm talking about is that color that is like a pale, pale blush color that has a tinge of yellow. Like it's just really, like the color of KKW's packaging. Not millennial pink. People say that her packaging is millennial pink. It's not. Millennial pink is pinker than that. It's really, really beige. It's really like a, a flesh color. It's like the color of some people's flesh. And I am so drawn to cosmetics that are that color. And in fact, it's like cosmetics that are my nude, like that are the color of my naked skin, or maybe someone who's a little bit darker than me. And it's not even just cosmetics, it's like packaging, anything that is that color. So in fact, for example, right here I have this was recently sent to me in the mail. I got an amazing care package from a subscriber named Wendy, and I actually talked about it recently in a ch another check-in video that I'm filming right now. I opened the package on camera, so there will be a video in the future that shows me opening it and showing everything that was in that package. It was so sweet. But one of the things she sent me is this Jouer blush duo, and the color of, the, of this is kind of what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's picking up very well on camera. I'm looking in the monitor and it maybe looks almost white, but it's not. It's like a really, really pale rose that's super neutral. And there's just something about this color that to me is so sophisticated and also so romantic. And that color, what I wrote actually on my list is cheek products that are in that color. So when I see a blush being advertised, that's that. It's like a barely there. Like in fact, I think Clinique has a cheek pop called Nude Pop. That's been on my wish list forever. And it's just because I have a fetish for that color in the cosmetics world. The next thing on my list is anything that's a stain. Anything that stains, like a lip stain or a cheek stain, I am such a sucker for a stain. And I think it's because it's like the idea that maybe you just used like a berry 
an actual berry from a bush on your lips, like a crushed berry on your skin or on your mouth. The reason your lips are a beautiful dark color is because you were drinking wine and the wine stained your mouth. Oh, I just, I just have a stained lip. I just got stained. Whenever I see something being marketed as a stain, I'm like, ooh, ooh. I want to stain my cheeks. I want to stain my lips. I would like stain my eyes. Is there such a thing as an eye stain? If there is, I'd be a sucker for it. And then <laughs> I was really getting into it at this point on the list. I wrote anything editorial. And you guys know what I'm, I'm talking about. Or if you don't, just Google editorial makeup or type editorial makeup into Pinterest and you will very quickly get the idea. Anything that has that kind of off-the-cuff, avant-garde, artistic, over the top, but still cool, super unbalanced and restrained and bold and all of those things together, but that's wearable for a human face during the day, I'm a sucker for that. I'm not sure that this category made any sense at all. <laughs> the next thing I have on my list is Glotion. Glotion, I think, is the name of an actual product, a drugstore product. Isn't there a drugstore product called Glotion? There are so many products in this category. There's MAC Strobe Cream. <laughs> There's MAC Strobe Cream. And just tons of brands have a version of this, a glowy lotion. And in fact, in my most recent empties videos, I talked about the Bobbi Brown Illuminating Balm. I think it's called Extra. That's a Glotion, and I loved that product. I'm a total sucker for the idea of Glotion, but as I learned <clears throat> by using up that little sample, there's no place for it in my routine because I don't want to put it on top of my sunscreen because I don't like to put any skincare on top of my sunscreen, and putting it underneath my sunscreen doesn't make sense because the sunscreen will then alter the finish, and the idea of the Glotion is that it makes your skin glow. So there's just no way for me to use Glotion. But the idea of having just one beautiful strobing creamy product that you would put on your face and then you would be glowing with Glotion. I want Glotion all over my body. Okay, so th this list was really supposed to be more about makeup, types of makeup product, like colors and finishes and stuff. But I did put on the list that quality packaging is something that I'm a sucker for. And it has to do with feeling of preciousness. So actually this same Jouer Compact is a perfect example. I live for this. When I opened this from the box that Wendy sent, I was just like, <gasps> it's that beautiful nude color and it's got these gold roses embossed in it and it's the quality, it's, it's, it snaps shut, it's got a beautiful big mirror, it's shiny and it just feels like a precious jewel. I am a sucker for anything that feels like a precious jewel. Those are the things that I kind of love, 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 my true, true loves. All, maybe not all, I'm like looking at my eyeshadows over there. I, I do have some true loves that are like, like my Wet n Wild comfort zone. I freaking love that palette. But the thing that I'm a sucker for is sophisticated, expensive feeling packaging. There, I said it. Why am I like this? So the next thing on the list is anything. <laughs> I wrote anything dirty or muted or ashes of roses, anything that's like, seems like it was mixed with cigarette ash. Any kind of color that's like dirty and sooty and ashy. And in fact, I have a perfect example that's not something I own. There's this indie brand called Ritual Defeat. Ritual de Fee, I think, I can't remember if it's Ritual de Fee or Ritual de Fee. Fee, F-I-L-L-E, the French word for girls, Ritual de Fee. And they have, the... Ritual de Fee sells this product called Eye Soot. It's a little container of kind of, it's not really a cream product, like I don't think it's as creamy. There's a dog barking and I'm just gonna keep talking because I've been waiting and waiting for it to stop. It's like a little pot, I'll, I'll link or I'll put a picture or something. It's a little pot of product that you dip your finger into and apply and it looks like soot. 
it looks like somebody just crushed up some ashes and soot and a little bit of pigment and stuck it in there. I think it's kind of gritty and dry. It's not super, super creamy, like the kinds of eyeshadows that are really popular. It's the kind of thing that would be perfect for my one eyeshadow all over the lid look, the one that I demoed with 24-7 from the Jaclyn Hill palette. And actually that eyeshadow is another good example of what I'm talking about. And in fact, the word grungy is perhaps making its debut at this moment in the list because that's really what I'm getting at. Any product that lends itself towards a grunginess, a grungy eye look, a smudgy, sooty, grungy situation, I'm a sucker for that. And in a similar vein is the next thing on the list. I wrote Dirty Olive Greens. And then I also wrote in parentheses chartreuse because I feel like it's a similar fetish. There's something about like dirty, grimy, grungy greens and chartreuse kind of fits into that category because it's, it's a weird vomit color to some people or like a pea soup color. And that yellowness, it's like dirty yellow, yellow that has been dirtied by green. There's something about the dirt and the grit of it that I really love. So dirty olive greens, there's one actually right here in front of me. It's a Makeup Forever shadow that I have. And that's the kind of grungy, sooty green that I'm always wanting to put all over my eye. Any product that comes out, that comes in an array of colors, it's always the green, the dirty olive green that I want. And then chartreuse, I actually pulled out my ColourPop Telepathy, which is an unbelievably beautiful chartreuse. I mean, can you even, can you even live? Why would I ever need any other chartreuse eyeshadow besides this one? I'm going to have to remember that next year because I'm a sucker. <laughs> I'm a total sucker for chartreuse. Has my hair been like this the whole time? Has this piece of hair been like that the whole time? I'm horrified. I hope it hasn't been like that for very long. Anyway, that is it. This has been really interesting because the more I've talked about it, as I've talked about it, as I've talked about these things that I love, 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 and as I've used this language, the language of being a sucker for something, it has made me think about the fact that I don't want to be a sucker for stuff. That's kind of the point of the no buy year, like that I'm trying to retrain my brain so that I'm no longer a sucker for things. But what I mean by that is that I don't want to be a sucker in the way of buying it without thinking about it. I'm happy that I'm a sucker for this stuff in that I love beautiful things and that I know what I love and that certain finishes and certain kinds of richness and certain kinds of color really make me feel good feelings and make me feel full inside and make me feel joy. But I think a lot of the times when we say I'm a sucker for that, what we mean is I'll buy it no matter what, or I'll buy it without thinking about it because it falls within this certain group of categories that are the things that are my things. I'm looking forward to noticing times in the future when I am allowed to buy things again in 2019, when I see something and I say to myself, ooh, I want that because I'm a sucker for that, but I actually don't think that it would be a smart choice for me to buy it. And in order to be able to do that, in order to be able to stop yourself in the act, you have to know what you're a sucker for. So needless to say, please let me know in the comment section down below, what are you a sucker for? Is there anything that I mentioned that you are also a sucker for? And I'm also curious to know if you think there's anything that I'm a sucker for that I forgot to mention, if you've been watching me this whole time. Because again, I kind of made this list off the top of my head and there might actually be other things that I'm a sucker for that I forgot about. So if there's anything you were expecting me to say that I didn't say, I would absolutely love to hear about that. Georgia, thank you so much for doing this collaboration with me. Hearing from you and being able to do a little project with you has absolutely been the light of my life for the past couple of weeks and I appreciate you so much. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to go check out Georgia's video if you haven't seen it yet. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>